So the next task here is to work out the shear force and bending moment at each point along our beam, each of those x coordinates along our beam as a result of this 90 kilonewton point load. So as usual, we'll start off by thinking about how does this work uh, for a hand calculation and how can we best map that over to some Python code. All right. So, well, really, you look at this structure and you say to yourself, right, well, the the, the, the equation that I'm going to use to calculate the shear force and the bending moment, it's going to be different depending on which region of the beam I'm in, right? So I could either be making a cut in this region here, okay? Or I could make a cut in this region here, essentially between each of the point loads that's coming onto the structure. Or I could be in this region down here. I mean, I could technically, I suppose, be in this region up here, but because there's no there's no forces, there's no moments, there's no reactions, there's going to be no bending moment in that region. So we're kind of ignoring that over on the left hand side. So what have we got? We've got a cut here. We're going to call that cut 1-1. One, one. We're going to call this cut 2-2. Two, two. And then this cut is going to be 3-3. Three, three. And so the equation for the shear force and the bending moment as I say, it's going to be different depending on where our particular cut is or where we're evaluating the shear force and the bending moment. So what we're going to do is imagine that we are taking a cut or we're evaluating the bending moment and shear force in the region between A and the point load. So in other words, cut 1-1, one, one, what would that look like? So if it was cut 1-1, one, one, well, let's just uh, look at a free body diagram, right? So we've got... Uh, Wait till we see, we've got 63 coming on here. That was our reaction. And we have, let's just draw on the distance into that 63. We know that because that's A. Let's let a dashed line represent our cut here. And we'll have uh, the cut revealing an internal shear force and an internal bending moment. We'll call it M1 and V1. And of course, the location of our cut, location of our cut is at position X. All right. Now, if we're in this region of the beam, right, well, then we only have to take into account for the purposes of calculating a shear force and a bending moment in this region, we've only got to take into account the vertical reaction at A, right? So our, our, our equation essentially for V1 is going to be like this. It's going to be V1 is basically equal to VA, all right? And we're going to say that M1 is going to be equal to VA, uh, so let me see, that's going to be VA times X minus A. So it's just VA times a lever arm, basically. Now there's going to be a minus in there. So that's pretty much it, right? So that's how we take into account the, the shear force and the bending moment due to that point load of 63. That point load happens to be a reaction, but nevertheless, it's still a point load on the structure. Now, if we were to look at cut to 2, let's look at cut to 2 and draw a free body diagram of that guy. So now in this region of the beam, we've got to take into account the 63, which is our reaction at A, but also the 90. And so our equation is going to look slightly different if we're in this region. So we'll say that V2, which we haven't drawn yet, V2, and let's call that M2, V2 is going to be the contribution, right? The contribution from the 63, all right? So that's going to be VA, right? So we've got VA here plus, remember 90 in our code exists as a negative number, so it's gonna be plus the minus 90, all right? And then we're gonna have M2 is gonna be whatever the contribution was for the 63, which we've already worked out up here, right? So it's going to be the same thing, minus VA times X minus A, and then we're gonna to have to take into account the influence of the 90, because remember, as we're moving along, when we're in different regions where we've got additional different components that are contributing to the shear force and bending moment in this region. And in this region, we've got the 63, which we have to take into account, but also the 90, right? So we've got minus 90 minus a minus 90 times X minus X P. Okay. Okay, so that's basically, it's basically the same idea. It's all the things that you're used to doing, making cuts and working out the shear force and the bending moment um, at the cut. And all we now need to do is just take that, bring it over to our Jupyter Notebook and actually just capture it in some code. Right, so here we are over in the Jupyter Notebook now. We're going to take the same approach that we did when we were looking at reactions. We're going to set up the code that cycles through all of our point loads. And then within that loop, we're going to have another function which we're going to write, which is going to calculate the shear force and the bending moment at each point along our beam. 
Um, so let's uh, let's just get started. You'll see that I've already got some uh, some headings in here just to save us a little bit of time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down here and actually start writing um, our main block, our main loop, which is going to loop through all these point loads. So we're going to use the same we're going to use the same uh, structure if the same test if NPL. Now let me see, it was P and capital L. If that's greater than zero, well then we're going to come in and we're going to evaluate this code. So we want to cycle through each of our point loads. And so again, I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to copy this from up here. And okay, because it's the same for loop, we're still cycling through our point loads. It's just this time we're going to call a different function. So this time our function is going to be called, it's going to be called shear underscore moment underscore PL. So we're going to pass in N, again, it's going to be the number of the particular point load in question. And we're going to assume that that function returns to us something called shear, which is going to be an array of shear values and something called moment, which is going to be an array of moment values. Then we're going to want to save those values into, into a new row within that bucket that we defined up here. So remember we defined this empty array. Uh, so every time we come through and calculate a new bunch of shear forces, we want to add another row to this empty array. And so we can come down here and we can say shear force is equal to np.append. We're going to append a new row onto, onto shear force. So that's going to be shear force. And we're going to add on within a set of square brackets shear that got returned from our function that we haven't written yet. And we're going to say we want a new row. We're appending a row. And so we add axis equal to zero, not one. Uh, OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for our bending. So we'll say bending moment, uh, bending moment, no s, is going to be np.append. We're appending onto bending moment and we're just going to append on the moment or the moments that got returned from our function and again let's just say axis equal to zero excellent let's just put a couple of notes on these guys brilliant so we're storing the shear force and bending moment record for the current point load all right now we just have to go ahead and actually write our function so for that i'm going to come up to this cell up here above it because we want the function defined before we try and call it. And our function now is going to be, what am I going to call it? Shear moment PL. And it receives N as, a, as an input argument. All right, and we're going to start off by extracting out the relevant numbers uh, from their, their arrays, just so they're easier to work with. So I'll say XP is going to come from, same as we had before, it's going to come from point loads. We're going to take out the number at row N position zero. And we now just want, we're dealing with a shear force diagram. So we only want the vertical component of the force that's perpendicular to the axis, i.e. the shearing force or the shearing component. So let's copy that and let me see, change that to a two. Now, this is why we saved the reactions corresponding to each point load, because we want to be able to use them in this calculation. So this is where this guy comes in handy because I want to know what were the specific reactions generated by this specific point load. So I'm going to define VA as being equal to the number that comes from PL record. And let me see, it's going to be N and zero. And then I want the vertical reaction at B, capital V lower B is equal to the same thing, except I want the number at position two. All right, let's get some notes in there. All right, now we're going to cycle through. We're going to cycle through each position along our beam and work out what is the bending moment and the shear force at that location. So the first thing I'll do before I start cycling through those uh, those locations is I'm going to initialize again a container. This is kind of my style. Different people have different styles of, of coding. My style tends to be where I like to initialize things first. I like to generate the containers, the boxes of the right size, and then just calculate value and slot them into the right locations. So what am I doing? I'm generating an array of zeros here where, an array of zeros, sorry, where the number of zeros is going to be the same as the number of elements within X. And so essentially I have a, a slot, if you like, 
uh, for that I can slot in a value for the shear force for every position of x. That's what that's all about. And we can do the same for moment. We can say moment is equal to, same idea basically. All right then. Right, now we can start. Now we can start actually cycling through. So I'm going to say for x in capital X. Now again, I want an iterator here. So I'm going to say, i.e. a number that goes from zero and increments by one every time I come through this loop. So I'm going to say enumerate on x. All right, so that's the syntax that gets me uh, the iterator I want. So let's start off. Let's start off and say for the current value of x, we're going to define the shear. I want to say it's equal to zero. That's going to be the default value. And we're going to say the default moment for the current value of x is going to be zero. And now it's up to us to override those values with whatever gets calculated below here. So the next question we ask ourselves is, if x is greater than a, well then what do I need to do? I need to calculate the shear and moment due to the reaction at a. Right, so let's just build the structure up first. The next thing we'd say is, now we're gonna write some code in there in a second, but let's just get the overall structure first. So if x is greater than a, well then we go ahead and calculate the moment and shear due to the reaction at a. If x, now not else if, this is just a sep completely separate condition. So we could come in and we could evaluate what's inside this block of code. And then we could also end up evaluating what's inside this block of code here. So if x is greater than b, well then we're gonna calculate completely separately or potentially in addition to, we're gonna calculate the shear and moment due to the reaction at B. And then in another condition, we're gonna do another test, which is going to be if X is greater than the position of the force. So if our cut is to the right of our point load, well then let's go ahead and calculate the shear and moment due to the point load. So in this way, what you're basically gonna be doing is you're gonna be building up the, the relevant equation, depending on where your cut is being made, depending on the value of X, you're going to be, these three blocks of code here are going to be you sequentially building up the equation for the shear and the moment that is arising from each of these potential uh, each of these potential influences the reaction at a the reaction at b and the point load and then let's say we've got all of that calculated well then we'll just want to store the shear and moment for this location so in order for me to do that i'm going to write into uh, shear here which remember that was this guy here which was my array full of zeros, I'm gonna write into the relevant location within there. So that's why I wanted my little iterator i, so I could know where within shear I needed to drop this value into. So I'm going to say that's equal to whatever, whatever value of shear we ended up with after stepping through each of these if conditions. And moment at i is going to be whatever we ended up with after we'd worked our way all the way through each of these three conditions. So that's going to be moment, all right. And then let's not forget that at the end of all of this, we need to actually return at the bottom of the function, the array of shear values for the full length of the beam as a result of this particular point load and the array of moment values that are arising across the whole beam as a result of this point load. All right, now all we need to do is fill in these little blocks here. So if the cut is being made to the right of A. Well then, let's forget about everything else that's happening on this beam, right? Let's forget about other reactions, other point loads, everything, forget about it all. All we wanna do in this little block of code is work out what is the shear and moment at that cut due only to the force at A, the reaction at A. Okay, so we're going to say shear is equal to whatever shear was already plus VA. VA is the contribution to the shear force at that location from the reaction at A. Simple as that. And then we can say moment. The moment is equal to whatever the moment already was at this particular cut location, plus the contribution that comes to the moment from the reaction at A. So we'll say minus VA times the lever arm X minus A. All right, same concept, moving on to B. If we are to the right of B, well then let's say the shear is equal to, so we're like, we, we'll have already calculated a shear value here and we'll have up, well, here it is here, and we'll have updated shear. Now we're coming into this condition and if we happen to be after B, well then we're going to, over, not overwrite, we're going to add to whatever the shear already is, but then we're going to add in the contribution that the reaction at B makes to the shear at that cut. And the same idea for the moment. So the moment is equal to whatever it was already at this location minus VB times X minus B. All right, and then the last one, 
The last one is, again, if we're to the if the cut is to the right of the point load, forget about everything else that's going on on that beam and only here calculate what is the contribution of the point load to the shear and moment at the cut. All right, and for the moment, it's going to be whatever it was already, minus Fy times the lever arm, X minus XP. Excellent, and that's it. So in that way, you're basically step by step you're going to say okay well where am i where is my cut and then step by step by sequentially working your way through each of these guys if you need to take into account the influence of the reaction at a and or the reaction at b and or the 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 influence of the point load if you need to take those into account you're basically going to be take calculating the contribution of each of those different actions or each of those different influences and just adding them on superimposing them as you're working down through this code. And so in that way, you've worked out for every cut position, because remember, all of this is happening within a for loop. You're doing it for one position, storing the shear a moment, coming through, doing it for the next position along, storing the shear a moment, and then moving along to the next position and the next and so on and so forth. Right, so that should be it. So we should be able to execute this block of code, which defines the function, and then the next block of code should call the function. Okay, and we didn't get any errors. So we didn't get any errors, but yet we don't know yet whether we're right or whether we're wrong, whether we've made any silly mistakes in here. And it's you know very, very possible I've got some typos in here. So we're only really going to be able to work out whether we're right or wrong when we actually visualize this thing. So in the next video in this series, I'm going to come back and we're going to build that shear force and bending moment diagram. And the nice thing about that is once that's built, well then all we have to do is start layering on the influence of other types of actions, moments, UDLs, etc. And our shear force diagram will automatically update. So we're going to concentrate on building that shear and moment diagram, which is a piece of cake. It's a lot easier than anything we've done so far, uh, but we'll do that in the next video.